8325 West Palm Beach, Florida. Entertainment tonight, weekdays at 5.30 on TV 12. Each year at this time, the Federal Communications Commission reviews the licenses of television and radio stations all across the country. This year, due to some bureaucratic oversight, SCTV's license has been temporarily suspended. Fortunately, a recent court ruling has allowed us to continue broadcasting until the matter is settled. For his help on the case, SCTV wishes to thank Judge Bernard Green no relation to me, of course, who granted the ruling in our favor. SCTV would also appreciate the support of its viewers in the form of letters and phone calls to the FCC. Don't be afraid to phone the commissioners. At home, late at night, every night if you have to. You don't even have to say anything. Just breathe into the phone and hang up quickly. We also suggest strongly worded letters. Threaten the commissioners with physical violence if you think it will help make your point. Finally, let me appeal directly to the commissioners of the FCC. We want to stay in business. After all, the business of America is business. And at SCTV, business is our only business. So think about it, Mr. FCC Commissioner. Reviewing SCTV's license is good business for the community. And maybe good business for you. If you know what I mean. Help us stay on the air to keep bringing fine programs to our viewers, like the one you are about to see. Tired of ordinary television? Don't touch that dial. SCTV is now on the air. Starring John Candy. Joe Flaherty. Eugene Levy. Andrea Martin. Catherine O'Hara. And featuring Harold Ramis. Television like you've never seen it before. This is the SCTV Television Network. Silver Eagle Records presents... Good morning and welcome to AM Little America. I'm Tom Brokaw. It's pretty cold here in Little America. What's it like where you are? Today, we've got something for the whole family. First of all, an interview with the average American family. Found in Springfield, Illinois, by a Chicago demographics company, Mr. and Mrs. John Stone and their children. It appears that statistics are right. The average American family is three and three quarters people. I want to, would you like to introduce yourselves? Hi, Tom. Yes, I'm John Stone, and this is my wife, Mary. This is my daughter, Jane. And who's the fraction there? Well, that's my son, John Jr. Well, if I could address this a question to John Jr., how does it feel being only three-fourths of a person, John? Well, how do you think it feels? Dad, who's that creep? That's Tom Brokaw, son. The average American family. And now a highlight for some of you kids and maybe some of you fathers, too, an exclusive interview with television's Wonder Woman, Linda Carter. Linda, let me ask you this right away. How does it feel being television's Wonder Woman? Do you sometimes uh, forget that uh, you're Linda Carter? No, I don't forget I'm Linda Carter, but people often do, Tom. They do? Really, they forget who I am. And more than anything right now, I'm fighting to protect my own identity. Me, Linda Carter. Not Wonder Woman, but me, the actress who can play many roles. Wonder Woman is just one of the many faces of Linda Carter. And yet you came on the show uh, dressed in your Wonder Woman costume, Linda. Well, I, I like wearing the outfit. Is there something wrong with that? No, nothing at all. Perhaps we could talk about uh, some of those roles you're interested in oh, doing. Oh, yes. I'd really love to do some serious acting. Really? Oh, I'd love so much to play Lady Macbeth or Hedda Gabler. You know, maybe some Chekhov plays. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, uh, nothing at all. Uh, perhaps you'd want to wear that uh, costume in uh, Chekhov play or... Maybe I would. What's it to you? Doesn't bother me a bit. Uh, I think I speak for most healthy North American males when I say, uh, Linda, you're looking good in that costume. Real good. Oh, uh, really? You're a sexist pig broker. Really? Three marks like that that drove the Amazons to Paradise Island where we live today. Really? And where men have finally been put in their place. In cages! Like the monkeys that they are! Well, hold on a bit, Linda. I think you're getting a little bit carried away. I don't think so, broker. Let's see how the big man can handle Wonder Woman! Come on, baby! Come on! I'll be back again tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good day. Fight your little worm! Fight your worm! Fight your worm! Whitey! Say, money, how's it shaking, my man? 
Look, uh, you haven't seen a certain Anthony the Toad Lazaro around lately, have you? I don't know, Jack. My eyesight ain't been too good lately. You know what I'm talking? Yeah, I know what you're talking. Maybe this will help clear up your vision. A Jackson, hmm. Well, I'm still a little blurry, my funky friend. All right, try these on. Oh, that's 2020, Jack. Tony the Toad hangs around Mother's place every night about 9 o'clock. Jack, Mother's a... Hey, nine. Mama, how are you? I know. Hey, buddy, you have the time? Yeah, sure. My watch is suddenly busted. Yeah. Well, maybe this will help fix it. Still running a little slow. Let's try that. All right on time now. It's 8.30. 8.30. There you go. Dan Money. Not just another cop. He's got a big wallet, and it's loaded for mystery. Mr. Foreman, has the jury reached its verdict? Well, Your Honor, maybe we have. Maybe we haven't. Your Honor. Your Honor, if it please the court, I... I think I can throw a little light on the subject. Dead money. He's looking for trouble, and he's willing to pay for it. I'm Floyd Robertson. And I'm Earl Cannon Bear. And this is the SCTV News. Today's top story, SCTV's Earl Cannonbear gets an exclusive report with a top figure in the city's underworld. Here with that story is Earl. Earl? Thanks, Floyd. A report out of City Hall today states that organized crime is on the increase. Well, we've been hearing that same old story now for years, and I, for one, believe it. But how does a good investigative journalist prove such a thing? Well, he gets out his shovel of questions and starts digging. Does organized crime control this city? Is there a mafia? In the following interview, I used some unconventional tactics to get answers to these questions. For obvious reasons, the identity of my informant cannot be revealed. He will be wearing a bag over his head. I will refer to him only as Mr. X. Uh, Mr. X, what exactly is your function in the world of organized crime? Uh, Earl, I, um, I work for a loan shark. Uh, I'm what's known as uh, an enforcer. That is to say that uh, when someone falls behind on the paying of a debt, I'm called in to uh, put the muscle on, you understand? Have you ever killed anyone? No. But uh, I have, however, broken uh, some noses and ribs in my day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mr. X, let's get right to the point. Mm -hmm. There have been a rash of barbershop bombings in town in the past few months, and I want to know, was organized crime behind them? Well, I don't know if I can answer that. Uh, my, my memory ain't been so good uh, lately, you know. Uh... Well, perhaps I can help. Well, first of all, you gotta know the chain of command, Earl. Uh, we start off with the patrol boys. Patrol boys? Patrol boys, yeah. Then You're the sure? Yeah, I'm positive. Then you got, uh, right after the patrol boys, you got uh, what's known as tenderfoot. Tenderfoot. So we have patrol boys, tenderfoot. What is the next rank? Eagle gangster. <laughs> Eagle Gangster, you're sure about that? Yeah, Eagle Gangster. That's uh, one below uh, the Big Chief. The Big Chief. So he's the top man in the organization, the Big Chief. Correct. Okay, Mr. X, who here in this city is the Big Chief? If I tell you that, Earl, I could get killed. Well, perhaps I can help you out on that one. You said I'd get killed. Thirty bucks. For Thirty bucks, I'll only give you his initials. R.T. R.T. Yeah. Richard Talbot. No. Ralph Timmis. Not even one. Those are his initials, though. Uh huh. Rocco Tutti. No. Come on. Well, thanks for being on the program, Mr. X. Uh, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, organized crime here in our city. It has its own structure, starting with patrol boys and working its way up to the big chief, who here in this city is a Raymond Tucker. No. Is a man with the initials R.T. 
This is Earl Cannonbear. Oh, uh, Earl. Uh, you're about uh, a month behind in your car payments. <laughs> Earl Cannonbear here for SCTV News. Excuse me. Could I have a straw for my soda, please? Sure. You want me to drink it for you, too? <laughs> Are you stuck in a low-paying job that you hate? Do you find yourself being rude and uncivil to people because you feel you're going nowhere? Then you may be interested in a high-paying career in the field of civil engineering. You'll develop a technical skill in a courteous manner that will enable you to say things like, Excuse me, do you mind if I survey here? And thank you for those blueprints. There are also exciting career opportunities available in the fields of civil defense, civil engineering, and civil aeronautics. And you'll learn to speak in civil tongues. So send today for this free pamphlet outlining the many career opportunities in the field of civil engineering. Let me see this. Why, certainly. My pleasure. Act today. Don't delay. It may just change your life. Hmm. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. My pleasure. You're quite welcome. And now here's your local announcer to tell you where to send. Send now to Civil Opportunities Box 333, Racine, Wisconsin. Send now. Don't delay. What are you waiting for? Do it before you forget. What do you want me to do? Put the stamp in an envelope, too, huh? Come on, do it now. I said now. Come on, too sweet. <laughs> Rock and roll has got to go. Like today. Oh, hi, boys and girls. I'm Officer Friendly. Thanks for stopping by the precinct today, because I got a lot of things to tell you and some people for you to meet. That's Sylvester Parker. He's bad. He's a juvenile offender. Are you bad, boys and girls? I hope not, because then you might turn up on Officer Friendly's most wanted list. Sylvester pinched a car today, didn't you, Sylvester? I didn't do it! <laughs> and he tells lies, too. I hope you don't lie, boys and girls. Officer Friendly! Well, I said we'd have some visitors today, and it's Miss Taylor, the social worker. Hello! Officer Friendly, you know it's against the law to book a juvenile without notifying the juvenile authority, the child welfare board, or the child's parent or guardian. My mistake, boys and girls. Officer Friendly was just trying to cut through a little red tape. Oh, what's he charged with? Well, he's not charged yet, but I think Grand Theft Auto might stick pretty good. I didn't do it! Friendly, he says he didn't do it. Well, isn't that just like a bad person, boys and girls? They do something wrong, and then they try to deny it later. All right, where's my son? Where is... There he is! Dad! All right, uh, what's going on here? Another visitor. You must be Sylvester's father. You're damn right I am. Now, what the hell's going on? Is he under arrest or what? Well, he is under arrest, Mr. Parker, and you're just in time to watch me take down his statement. Oh, Officer Friendly, don't forget to read him his rights. Oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> Here, Sylvester, why don't you take a look at these? Can you read this? Uh, you, you have the, the right to... Remain? Remain silent. You have the right to a turnkey. key. No, you no, that's attorney. See, so I'm an officer. All right, look, you skip the damn rights. I just want to know if he did it or not. Well, let's see if we can get a little confession out of him. Sylvester, you can save us all a lot of time and trouble by telling us the truth right now. Or you can keep lying and let me work you over for a couple of hours. <laughs> officer Friendly's just joking, boys and girls. Policemen never work you over when there's somebody else around. You caught me this time, Miss Taylor. But maybe Sylvester needs a little more light to help him remember. How's this? Uh, I did it! <laughs> well, that wasn't hard at all, was it, boys and girls? I hope you confess that quickly when you get picked up. Makes Officer Friendly's job a lot easier. And mine, too. Now that I know that Sylvester's a juvenile offender, I can sign him up for lots and lots of social work. And I'm gonna give him the beating of his life. Not so fast, Mr. Parker. <laughs> I get him first. Sorry, get him first. Sure. sure. Well, boys and girls, I think you can see what happens when you try to skateboard around the law. 
Well, before we go, I hope you're still writing down the names of the boys and girls you know who break the law. Remember, there's nothing wrong with being a fink. Now, here's where to send your list. Send it to Officer Friendly, 5th Precinct, Your Town, USA. Now, let's thank Miss Taylor for coming by. Oh, you don't have to thank me, Officer Friendly. It's my job and I love it. Well, thank you. <laughs> See you in court tomorrow, Sylvester. Goodbye, boys and girls. And thank you, Mr. Parker. I tried with this kid, Friendly. I really did. I, I tried. I honestly tried. You know what's wrong? He's a rotten little rat. Well, kids have to learn it somewhere, Mr. Parker. Who knows? I bet if I took a look at your yellow sheet, I might be cracking you someday, too, huh? I gotta... <laughs> well, I gotta get back on the old beat, boys and girls. So remember, don't let me catch you. <laughs> This season on SCTV, it's the undersea world of Marcel Cousteau. The world's greatest underwater mime returns to demonstrators' virtuoso pandemic talent. This is a man walking against the current. I love to imitate fish. <laughs> and this is my impression of Lloyd Bridges. <laughs> it's underwater mine at its best on the undersea world of Marcel Cousteau. Thursdays at 9 on SCTV. Join us. <laughs> I'm Alistair Cook. Next week on Masterpiece Theatre, we proudly present L.C. Greenwood's All the Long Leggedy Beasties. It's the heartwarming story of a kindly, old, eccentric veterinarian who practices his art in the hauntingly beautiful North Country of England. Well, I'm sorry. That coat will never walk again. He's breaking it in for the big race at Keswick, too. Well, you broke him in, all right. It's a wonder you didn't break his back. A man of your broad, expansive girth riding around on a wee Shetland pony. <laughs> Perhaps you've learned your lesson. I sure did, Doctor. I'll not be riding again, that's for sure. You're damn right you won't, because I'm putting him to sleep. Doc, you can't do that. Don't argue with me. When you've brought as many wee beasties into the world as I have, then you can tell me who's what. Now, that'll be ten, Bob. Come on. Doctor, where my wee dog live? Oh, how long have you had that dog? Eighteen years. Eighteen years? Oh, he's old then. Do <laughs> you have any idea how old that will make him in dog years? Well, it's, uh, well, he'd be well over eighty. Take my word for it. No, no, I think what I'm going to do is uh, put him to sleep. Before he has a heart attack, he dies on you. Oh, doctor, no. My husband died fifteen years ago. He's been my only friend all that time. Now, suit yourself. He's going to die anyway. Oh, you know best, doctor. Put him to sleep, then. Not so fast. You still owe me 28 bob for the wee lime and the budgie I put to sleep last week. <laughs> Will you take my wee rabbit and a couple of jars of marmalade? All right, but you still owe me 28 bob. <laughs> Doctor, you have to use the terrier. You're a wee terrier. Well, I like to do the job right. You may as well bring that rabbit in. He doesn't look so hot. I'll do them both at once. Well, all I know is if a farmer offers me a, a chicken or a jar of pickles for payment, I'll certainly accept, Doctor. A chicken? I had to bargain my way into the cinema with a chicken. I never would have seen all the films I have. You tried buying your medical instruments with a jar of sweet pickles. <laughs> Strange, I... I feel drowsy. It's only mid-afternoon, huh? Well, I took the liberty of putting away something in your tea. What are you talking about? I'm putting you to sleep! <laughs> you old fool! Is there an antidote? Of course there is. Right here. But it'll cost you a guinea. Hey! No, give me that guinea. Next week on Masterpiece Theater, Elsie Greenwood's All the Long Leggedy Beasties. I hope you'll join us.
and sheriffs investigate. Your information could be helpful, and you could be eligible for up to a $1,000 reward. You're always anonymous with Crime Stoppers. Welcome to Dream Interpretation. I'm Dr. Raul Wilson, and today's subject is Rita X. She is now sleeping, and with the use of our brain analyzer, we will actually be able to see Rita's dream. Bob, is Rita dreaming now? Yes, she is, Raul. Good. Then let's take a look at Rita's dream on our neurotronic screen. Is he here? We must talk to him. Here's cold if you talk. He's out to the bird fights. You want to go to the bird fights, senor? Come on, I'll take you. Naples is the funniest bird fights in all of Mexico. Not to maybe so, sir, but I know of another place. A 13 Ingestraus, where the bull fights on Sunday are unsurpassed. And what day is it today? Sunday. Then we must go there now. All of us! It's a very nice place you've got here. This letter is for you. It's from my lord, the Duke of Milan. Thank you. It's the letter O. Are you awake? What? Are you awake? No, I'm asleep. What time is it? <laughs> oh, uh, the dream appears to have stopped. Uh, let's analyze what we've seen so far. <laughs> in her dream, Rita uh, lives in a cave, which uh, makes me think that she is probably poor and very unhappy about that. Yet she dreams of 15th century Naples, uh, which means she is either a scientist uh, working on some kind of time machine, or she is actually well over 600 years old. I think the former. Uh, the letter with the big O on it, I interpret to mean absolutely nothing whatsoever, although some Freudians would probably argue that point with me. The German SS officer, very interesting. Uh, well, most scientists are German, so there's some kind of peer identification involved here. Uh, peers, peers, uh, spear. Uh, she probably at one time had a hidden crush on Albert Speer. The Mexican uh, very simply represents a siesta or sleep. Uh, the man with the letter, very interesting. A mailman of some kind, uh, probably the occupation of the man who is the real-life father of Rita's child. Uh, the most interesting thing about the dream, the face on the clock. On the number three, with the second hand about to lop off her head. Uh, I think this means at one time she was probably a big fan of the Three Stooges. In general, the, 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 the dream was very male-oriented, uh, which means that in my uh, mind, Rita is not a woman, but in fact, a man. I follow Wilson. This is Dream Interpretation. Until tomorrow, I'll see you in your dreams. Bye for now. Take skip from me, Popeye. The sacrifices our veterans have made for this country is something Americans should never forget. Hang it in, weekdays at 10.30 on...